Hi, everybody. Uh, today, what I want to do is talk with you about three things that I believe you need based on my experience uh, to get from where you are now to where you really want to be in your private practice. So you can apply these three things um, to just about any type of challenge that you're experiencing. I can't remember if it was Einstein um, that said the same level of consciousness that got you here won't get you there. And what that means is that, um, you know, we, we have a limited amount of knowledge. We know how to get so far in our private practice. And then we kind of reach a point where we feel like, oh, what do I do next? What do I do now? So if you find yourself, and you probably will, I, mean, I certainly did, do you find yourself in that situation? Um, I'm going to give you these three things that you can try um, that helped me get um, from where I was to where I wanted to be. And I'm still using these today. So I'm actually working on uh, something special for you at the moment that I hope I can share with you in the next few weeks. But I'm using this exact strategy to help me go from where I am to where I really want to be. So the three things that I've learned, uh, number one, you really need a unique and compelling message for your private practice. So why? Well, you want to stand out and you want to be able to um, have a reason that potential clients are going to feel a bond with you or feel a connection with you. So um, having something very generic, like, you know, I provide a safe space and, um, you know, everything we do is confident. That's not really a message. Um, your message really needs to speak to um, who you help, how you help them and, and what you help them with, you know, um, so that everybody knows, yes, this is the person I need to work with or no, it's not. So this is when we're thinking about, you know, I'm feeling stuck, I'm doing all of the things and I'm not getting any clients yet. It will be nine times out of 10, it's because you don't have a clear message. And I understand why that happens. It happens because we're afraid to niche because we don't want to um, deny anybody a service. Um, there's that type of thinking, but you don't you don't deny people a service when you have a niche. Um, you can work with anybody that you want, but the function of a niche is it gets you referrals. <laughs> so, um, and there's other fears around niching as well. Like I don't want to be um, just doing the one thing all the time. Well, you don't have to, but there'll be a theme or a trend in what you do and what you see and that's what you want to let people know so that they know to refer to you, like what we were talking about yesterday about being referable. So you need to have a really short, clear and compelling message. That's number one. We want people to say, yes, this counsellor or this therapist, this psychologist, this social worker is for me, or actually, no, they're not. I think I need somebody who specialises in that or that instead. So that's really good. We want to give all of our potential new clients an opportunity to either opt in or opt out of working with us. And it's really great if we have that right up front, kind of like having your fees on your website. I do believe that that's a really good thing to do because I believe in transparency. Um, so I think if you put your fees on your website, again, you give people the autonomy and the independence and the ability to say, do you know what, I'm going to opt in or opt out based on the fee. And that way, you know, that everybody that's coming to work with you, who's seen your website, who's read the fees, because they're have read the fees um, is already okay with that and so then when you have those inquiry calls um, there's no selling per se people are already sold they're really just wanting to have that connection with you make sure for themselves that you're the one they want to work with and then they're going to go and book in so number one um, in order to get from where you are to where you want to be, make sure you've got a really clear, unique, compelling message. I'm in the process of updating my message as well. Um, as I said, I'll be sharing all of this with you down the track. The second thing that will really help you go from where you are to where you want to be is visibility. So I don't mean, um, you know, being on all of the things. You don't need to be on all of the things. Just be on one thing. Um, one thing is going to be determined by where your two things. Number one, where you feel most comfortable. And number two, where your audience is. Okay. So if you don't know where your um, 
dreamiest clients are spending most of their time, then you need to go back and do that research because we can't just guess. If you start guessing, oh, I guess that they're probably on Instagram because all the other therapists are on Instagram and that's where they're getting work, so I'll go on Instagram, you're, you're going to struggle to get from empty diary to full diary. So what you really want to do is take a step back before you do your marketing and research your demographic and really look at, okay, what are the behavioral characteristics of my demographic here? Um, how, how often are they on social media? When are they on social media? Like, for example, um, you know, data shows us that um, uh, working mums are often on their social media at school drop-off and school pick-up. So if you're going to be um, promoting your service or connecting with your audience, we know that if you post at those times, um, that your posts have a really great chance of being seen by your target audience if you call them out. Um, as opposed to, well, I'm just going to send an email on a Wednesday. So really get to know your audience. For me, I know my audience um, are between 35 and 55. I know they're nearly entirely women. Um, and I know that they love Facebook. Um, they're connected on Facebook in all sorts of um, groups. So my clients are you, you know, professionals um, that are working on starting a private practice or developing the practice or scaling their business, recruiting, all that sort of stuff, studying and then looking at moving into um, work or private practice. Um, and so I've done the research. I know where my clients are. And that for me is Facebook. Um, and that's why I spend so much time on Facebook doing things there. I want to meet my audience where they are. I want to get to know them. I want to have conversations with them. I want to build relationships with them, all that sort of stuff. And that's what I mean by being visible. Now, if I was doing a million things, I'm not going to be anywhere. It's kind of like, um, you know, if you're in that uh, feminine energy, you kind of say, oh, I want to be on Instagram and I want to do a podcast. And I want to go on YouTube and I want to do this and I want to do that. You can spread yourself way too thin and you'll be posting inconsistently everywhere and you won't build up that following um, that's really loyal to you, that loves what you do, that um, connects with you. You won't, you won't do that. And then you'll be wondering, why am I doing all of this work and nothing's happening? So while it might feel counterintuitive, trust me, if you're on more than one platform and you're not getting the number of referrals that you want or you're not making the turnover that you want, please consider taking a step back, researching your demographic properly so that you can see where they are. And do you know what? Your demographic might not even be on Facebook or Instagram. Your um, demographic might be people that use Google. And so they're going to be Googling things, in which case, don't worry about your social media. Um, just have a really good website. And we can talk about websites another time because that's a big topic. I love talking about websites, as you know. But just make sure you've got a really good website. Um, and so that's the second thing, being really visible. And you don't, I, I do believe that you need to be consistent, but you don't have to be every day, okay? I try and do stuff every day because I love it, but you might not love it. <laughs> so don't feel pressured to show up every day, but do be consistent. And what I mean is if you're going to have a blog, please don't let me or anyone on your audience jump onto your website, click the blog tab and see the blog was in February and it hasn't been updated since. That's like kind of really sad to see. Um, so if you're going to have a blog, um, update it and really make a plan and put it in the diary and say every Monday morning, I'm going to post a new article on my blog. That's it. It's that easy. It gets to be really, 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 really easy. Promise. Um, the last thing, step three, or it's not really a step, it's like a concept three. A thing that really helped me and does continue to help me go from 
where I am to where I want to be is being consciously aware of the activities that I'm doing in the day and bringing energetic balance to them. And what what I mean by that is, um, and it's so easy to do, it's so easy to do, to just tune out of your body and to tune out of your energy and just fall back into that trap of thinking, I have to feel exhausted at the end of the day in order to feel like I've put in a good day's work, you know, that's happened to me too. And it's BS, like it's just not true. Tiring yourself out and exhausting yourself is not a measure of your success and it's not a measure of your worth. Um, I think what's better to do is to be really aware to check in with yourself at different times of the day and say, where's my energy at? Now, if you're in the doing energy and you're in that masculine energy of, I, uh, you know, it's step by step and um, I, I've got to do this thing and then that thing and then this thing and then that thing and what's my next process and what's my next step and what's the framework here and what's this. If you're doing all of the stuff um, and you're not seeing results, it's because you're not in balance. You're not giving enough balance to the feminine energy. I mean, people also call it yin and yang. I just learned it as masculine and feminine, so that's what I call it. Um, but the, the feminine energy you need to be in because that's about receiving and it can feel really hard to, you know, when you aren't seeing results in the practice to say, oh, well, I'm just going to go and spend some time in my feminine now. It feels really hard to do that because your ego says, no, don't, because you might not get a new client or you might not get that payment or something. You've got to be here. No, you have to get some support if you need it in breaking that. The referrals will come, the inquiries will come, the emails will come, the Psychology Today profile inquiries will come. Um, all of the stuff will come, including money into your bank account, will come when you're not in front of the computer. A lot of the time it's going to come when you're in your feminine. So being in that feminine energy means not having a bubble bath or doing things like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about moving your body. You need to, and if you're, um, you know, getting to your hips, the feminine energy is in, in the hips, right? It's womb energy. It's about birthing things. I know I'm sounding a bit woo-woo right now. But you want to be moving your body. So maybe you're sitting at your desk and you feel like you want to have a, a big stretch, right? That's your feminine energy saying, I need to move. I need to move. It's trying to get your attention to say, move me. So go outside, go for a walk around your garden, move your body. Um, of course, if you want to put on some music, do it. Um, if you want to light a candle and journal, do it. If you want to do something creative, do it. If you want to just... Pack up the computer for an hour and go and eat something really, really good and talk to somebody on the phone or just go and visit your neighbor and have a coffee or socialize or something like that. Get into your feminine. Um, it's when you're out of balance energetically that things are going to start slowing down in your practice. This is what I believe and this is what I know to be true for me and for people in private practice that I work with that kind of think uh, we share the same sorts of ideas and I'm sharing them with you in case they're new to you. But um, when you can have a, a balance and you can integrate the giving energy, the productive, the forward moving energy with the energy of receiving, um, with the energy of um, filling your cup, that's when you're going to more quickly go from where you are now to where you want to be, okay? And that's what um, my big passion is, um, helping people to understand um, what the masculine energy is, what the feminine energy is, and how you can integrate those two energies to create a private practice that feels easy, that feels, well, it feels easy because you're in flow, right? Um, so flow is when you're um, just working and everything's just happening, right? It's all just happening quickly and easily. Easily. And you're like, oh my gosh, where did the time go? I didn't even have lunch because you were just in flow and the time just gone like that. That's what I mean by the practice gets to feel so easy and you get to wake up in the morning like I do, um, excited to be here, like really like, oh, I, I get to do this for another day. Like I can't believe how lucky I am. And I'll say to the people that I work with, you know, can you believe we get to do this? Like how lucky are we that we get to do this? And I believe in it so much, this balance 
of, of energy in whatever language or verbiage you want to use it. And um, so much. And I really believe that, you know, in terms of moving your business from here to there, a lot of it's also going to involve dropping from here to here, dropping from um, that egoic thinking like, what if it, what if I fail? What if I succeed? What if it doesn't work? Or what if I have to go back to my old job? Um, or all of that type of thing. Back down into soul, back down into my purpose. Why am I doing this again? Why is this so important to me? Um, what will it mean for my audience if I can get out of my own way and share this beautiful message that I've got to share or share this beautiful approach to therapy um, that's just mine? You know, it, it's like it's, I don't know, it's transpersonal therapy, but I've put my own, I've infused my own sort of vibe into it or whatever it is that you do. So those are the three things I believe helped me and continue to help me and people I work with go from where they are to where they want to be okay so I'm sharing them with you because um, I want to help you it's my big 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 dream that you all have a flourishing successful thriving um fulfilling fulfilling enjoyable I can't believe I get to do this private practice um by the end of the year you know um and if you need any support or any help we've got the groups so feel free to just jump in and ask support each other help each other that's one of the really good things we've got access to as well community you are never alone you are surrounded by people who are on your journey um, and who want to help you there are people in our communities um counselors connect australia and australian counselors in private practice online that are further along and they'll be more than willing to help you but guess what there's also going to be people behind you even if you feel like you're right at the start there's always going to be people coming up behind you so you'll always have some little nugget or pearl of wisdom that you can share with someone else and that's what makes these communities so great so thank you for watching um, I hope that this landed for those of you that needed to hear it um, and for those of you who really want to understand what's the quickest way for me to go from where I am in my practice to where I want to be okay so just to recap rework your message if you're not getting those referrals and those payments the inquiries it'll be your messaging nine times out of ten it's going to be the messaging um, number two the visibility if they don't know you're there, they're not going to refer to you. If um, they don't know you're there, your audience can't make inquiries and, and book in, okay? So you need to be visible. And then the last thing is make sure you manage your energy. And you can do that just by checking in with yourself during the day and just saying, have I been in my masculine today? Have I been in my feminine? What could I do to reintroduce some balance, okay? And if you need help or support, let me know or reach out in our communities. Thank you so much for watching another little video. Hope it was super helpful. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye for now.